I uh, was looking for a ministry with women and with the poor. And that's when I, I had heard about the Catholic worker here in Dubuque. I knew they did a lot of actions for peace and justice, but I didn't know that much about them. So I went down there. I spent a summer down there to see if I would like it. I loved it, so and it seemed to fit me with all my gifts. Uh, I was able to use every gift I think I had. Uh, Catholic worker movement, as uh, most of you might know, is uh, founded by Dorothy Day uh, and Peter Morin. It, at that time it was a house of hospitality, and that's their work, main work, uh, house of hos houses of hospitality for homeless people, people in need. And here in Dubuque, even though it's a small place, there were many homeless people who came to our facility down on uh, 21st Street, just west of Elm, on the nor little north of downtown Dubuque. Um, there are houses now all over the country, and uh, the closest one to here in Dubuque is now over in Wisconsin. And the emphasis on that is not so much hospitality in terms of taking in guests, but it is on the environment, the land, the importance of land. And that's also part of the original vision, too, of the Catholic Worker Movement. This was a, a, a ministry for me of living with lay people as well. We had a man on the over the time I was there, which was four years, we had a couple men on the staff, we had lay women, um, one married woman for a while, uh, one other sister, she was a Dubuque Franciscan. But we, and we interacted with a lot of people in the city who were supporters of Catholic Worker. Because on Friday nights when we had our community gathering, which is also part of the Catholic Worker, which uh, movement, which is called clarification of thought, where you come together and discuss the issues of the day in light of the gospel and so on. We had mass, and um, Father Bob Beck from Loris uh, was the main priest who was supportive of, you know, involved with the Catholic Worker, and then there were other priests who, from, who came in to say mass. But the larger community too was consisted of lay people, and uh, but it was a wonderful gathering of uh, every Friday evening. Um, during the time I was there, we did have a refugee family come and live with us from Cambodia, which at that time was going through a very big crisis in the country. And um, but we had, you know, as I say. Mostly women, mostly women and children. At that time, Dubuque did not have a facility for uh, women suffering from uh, domestic violence, so we, we took in the women who were suffering from domestic violence, getting calls in the middle of the night sometimes to, from the police to take in somebody. Uh, a typical day, though, we began with prayer and talking about what, what, who was going to do what during that day. And then people would go off in the morning and come back in, around supper time. But we took turns doing meals and ate, ate, ate with the people there. So people would go out on the weekends and garden. That, uh, and uh, in, somebody, in somebody's backyard, but we would bring it. And then we'd have those things to eat that they would bring over. But uh, so it was mainly kind of like a work day. Uh, and then the homeless people, they, you know, if they, they could go out looking for jobs or do whatever they needed to do. And um, one reason I did stop working was because we needed a presence in the house during the day. And then I, I, I did that for some couple of years. We got very close to a couple of them, very close, especially the couple of the young women. Um, but. Um, I don't know, you know, a lot of times, sometimes it'd be people traveling through, families that needed a place, I mean, or the, the, the women who were going through something hard uh, with domestic violence. I belonged to a group at that time that was sponsored by the Y, which was a committee that was dealing with domestic violence in Dubuque, and they eventually have, have their own home, or they even had it just 
around the time I left, they were getting their own place, which was a real step for this community. It was just a wonderful uh, ministry. Plus that, as I say, we got involved. In, I, that was, led me into a lot of direct involvement in peace and justice movement. I protested with others at the SAC base in Omaha, Strategic Air Command base in Omaha. When I was here in Dubuque, um, we, we developed a nuclear disarmament coalition. Francine Banworth, who is a laywoman who was not involved so much in the Catholic Worker, but I met her here in town. She and I coordinated the Dubuque Nuclear Disarmament Coalition, which at that time consisted of 22 groups, if you can imagine. I had the opportunity to go on a trip as a citizen diplomat. Uh, we went to Ukraine, the city of Kiev, which you hear on the news, and to Moscow. We met with peace committees at that time. These, these cities and had peace committees. Our trip was organized around two little girls, both seven years old, one from Madison, Wisconsin, and one from uh, uh, Kiev, Ukraine, they, who played the violin. So they, would, uh, they were considered our peace ambassadors, and they would play at these different uh, places where we would visit. Three of us went to Milwaukee, ended up, well, Barbara Pachera and myself went to Milwaukee. Then Sue Effinger joined us the following year, and we stayed there was probably the longest place I was any place was Milwaukee, but we worked primarily in the African American community. But Barbara taught at the jail, Sue did adult education work, and I did uh, some administrative work over with the, uh, it was called the Shade Tree Family Resource Center, and we worked with the uh, School Sisters of Notre Dame. And, uh, but it was just a, a very vibrant time in our lives. I think it was quite profound, really, basically. Uh, to interact with homeless people, it taught me not to be afraid. Even when I went to Milwaukee, our church had the homeless people come in, and I used to, you know, engage with them. I was not uh, afraid of homeless people and felt comfortable doing, working with them. So, um, in the Catholic Worker Movement, uh, uh, whoever comes to the door is considered to be an ambassador of God. So um, you look at people as the face of Jesus in some way. I, I just attribute a lot of my grounding in peace and justice to, well, the BBMs, because we've been supportive of all these issues and, you know, through their help I was able to do all these things we could make choices about our ministries and our living situation so um, we were able to I mean it's really been a very fulfilling time